Hey y'all, this is Stacy. And this is Tom. With RVTexasYall.com. And today we're in Galveston, Texas, on Galveston Island. And you know, as native Houstonians, we've been coming to Galveston our all, whole lives. Whole lives. And we often get asked, you know, things to do when you're down here. You know, everybody's heard of Schlitterbahn and Moody Gout Gardens and Pleasure Pier, and those are all really a lot of fun. Yeah, but what we want to do is show you the attractions around here that we love that won't break the bank. Yep, and there are some good ones there. Absolutely. So stick around and we'll show you around Galveston Island. So you can start your day out in Galveston at Galveston Coffee Roasters. Now this is a great mom and pop coffee roaster. They roast everything locally, they create their own unique blends, and they give away free samples all day. And it's great stuff and it's also owned by a buddy of mine, uh, John and his wife Drew. Then you can shoot over to the Texas Seaport Museum on Harborside. Now there's a lot of different ticket packages here that you can choose from. We did the 1877 Alyssa in the museum, $12 for adults, $9 for kids. Uh, behind the museum, you'll see a mark of historic floods. Now that top level up there, that white, that is how high the water got on September 8, 1900 for the great storm. Yeah, and the, the mark right above my head was Hurricane Ike in 2008, and it was devastating as well to the Galveston area. The storms here have really impacted the future and direction of this entire region. Um, but you know, back in the day, ships like the Elissa here, this is an 1877 tall ship that has been restored to the way it appeared in 1877. And the Elissa would, it was a cargo ship for 90 years. And it, Galveston was amongst its ports. So Galveston being a port city and a big port city back in the late 1800s, this was a major stop for, the, for ships like the Elissa. And it was unfortunately due to be de uh, just deconstructed back in the 1970s. But folks in Galveston were looking for a way to show off their maritime heritage. And they were able to locate this ship and bring it here to Galveston and lovingly recreate it back to its original form and function. Yeah, and it's really beautiful. And of course, we're on, on the upper deck here looking around and you can just imagine how high these sails and stuff were. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. And here you are looking out over, but- I'm facing the wrong direction. Yeah. Just uh, so you know. <laughs> we got that confirmed from somebody <laughs> else, but. But it really takes you back in time and shows you the history of maritime uh, heritage in this area. They've done just a great job restoring it. This is a National Historic Landmark, and it is one of only three 19th century iron square riggers in the world that still sail. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is true. It, they still sell this boat from time to time, and that, that's really cool. This is one of the original things from the boat. The right builder's here. plate, which shows it's been on the ship since it was built in 1877. Yeah, so as we go up and out and looking through the porthole. There we are, ringing the bell. <laughs> it's just a really fun place to visit. They've done just a great job with the restoration. And right next door, you can visit the Seaport Museum, uh, which talks more about Galveston's history. You know, back in 1899, like it says, third richest city in the U.S. in proportion of population. That is incredible. Yeah, it is. Galveston was the place to be in the late 1890s, and well, even just before that. But then of course, unfortunately, the great storm of 1900 hit. This says over 6,000 people killed. Some things I've said 8,000, some places I've seen 10,000. A third of the city easily was destroyed in that hurricane, and it really changed the direction of the town. Uh, but you've got other things like the bell from the original USS Galveston in 1904. There were two USS Galvestons actually. And then this cannon. Yeah, the, 
They unburied this uh, only in 1970-something? Right, and it was actually sunk in 1837. Uh, it was one on one of the original Texas Navy ships. Wow. Now next door to the Alyssa and the Texas Seaport Museum, you have the Pier 21 Theater, which has movies uh, all day long. One of the great storm of 1900, which is a great way to become more familiar. It's got, it features stories from the survivors themselves and actual footage, and it's just an incredible way to really learn more about how Galveston not only was impacted by that storm, but how it recovered. Yeah. And then also you've got another one on the, uh, Jean Lafitte, of course, the famous pirate. Actually lived here on Galveston for several years and ran his pirating operation. You can see remains of his home, or they say parts of his home, maybe right down the street on Harborside. Yeah, uh, and they're very good attractions. You can see them both uh, if you want, or you can just go to one. Yeah, and it's only $6 for adults, $5 for kids 6 to 18, so very affordable. Yeah, and then it's, it's a neat way to learn some of the history around there. Then you can go over to the Strand, which is just a few steps away from Harborside. You've got the historic Strand District and one of our favorites, La King's Confectionery. We never miss it every time we go to Galveston. Of course, we've, already, we've done a video on this one as well. And I will link that in the description. Yes, they make their own ice cream here, their own candy. It's in a 150-year-old building and historic equipment all used. Yeah, and every time we go, we do not miss the malts. We have to get a malt every single time. It's wonderful. And then you can do the tree tour. Now, Hurricane Ike, we mentioned earlier in 2008, unfortunately flooded the entire island under several feet of seawater, and it killed a lot of the old oak trees here on the island. But chainsaw carvers came in, and they created over 20 sculptures that you can now tour the island and see art made from the dead trees. And it's crazy because it's just like in people's front yards and stuff. So it's just throughout the town and, and it's really, really beautiful. And it, it was a neat way that they were able to preserve uh, these trees in a way that instead of just cutting them down. That's right, that's right. Here we go on to the Bolivar Ferry. We're taking this out of Galveston and going over to Bol the Bolivar Peninsula. It it's is free. It's free. It's fun and it's free, and you can also bring your RV on this if you want. You see what's in front of us, and that can fit RVs easily. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Look at this. You're going to be in the front row.
spacing. Yay! <laughs> the class IRV over there. Unloading the other. That's pretty good. And you can go. Galveston Ferry actually has a Twitter account, and they tell you what the wait times are from each side. So if you're interested in going and you're not sure if there's going to be a long wait to load, you can check Galveston Ferry on Twitter, and it'll tell you the load times from from both directions. That's a great tip. Yeah. Welcome to Bolivar. And then you can go geocaching. Now, it's, that's always fun. Oh man, you know, there are over a hundred geocaches hidden around Galveston Island. And yeah. some of them are related to history and some of them are related to quirky little things around the island. Um, yeah, it's a great family thing to do. You know, we, we always, every place we go, we try to, to find a few geocaches along the way. And if you're not, if you've never heard of geocaching, it's basically a global game. You can go to geocaching.com and and you seek out, based on hints and GPS coordinates, these little hidden treasures. Yeah, this one was what do they call that? A micro. Right, right. And it's a small one. Some of them come in pretty big canisters and stuff, like in the state parks a lot of times. And you know, we found some really interesting things that we never would have noticed had it not been for the game of geocaching. And we actually have a video about geocaching uh, where we found a historic chicken sanctuary in Bastrop. So I'll link to that video also. Yeah, that's correct. And it was really neat. We would have never known about those chickens had we not done a geocaching. And a free thing to do. A free thing to do, no matter where you are. That's right. Then you can come down the road. This is on the seawall going uh, west. This is Magic Carpet Golf, and this has been a favorite of ours for many, 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 many years. Yes, our son loves coming here as well. It's they got two real nice challenging courses. Yep, one is more shaded. The back course is more shaded, so if it's hot, you might opt for that. The front course, you get more of the coastal breezes because it's right across from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. A lot of family fun. A lot of family fun and only $10 for adults, $7 for kids 12 and under. Just down from that, you've got Cafe Michael Burger, one of our favorite restaurants on the island. A mix of German and burgers. Absolutely, and it and the, everything there is wonderful. Oh, you have to try the homemade apple strudel and say hi to Deborah, the owner. Yeah, yeah, we met her on a cruise. We actually. did, and she's a great lady, always working hard. Then you go down just a little further and you go to Galveston Island State Park. Now, of course, we have to talk about the state park while we're here. Oh, yeah, and we get a shot here of the park map and and then right here, we're on the beach side. Right, right, you've got a beach side and a bay side. You can camp here. You can. There are paddling trails. There are nature trails to hike, bird watching, fishing, beach combing, anything you like uh, outside. You can do here at Galveston Island State Park. This is the bay side right here now, and and there were a lot of people out kayaking the day we were there. Exactly, and it's only five dollars per person to enter. 
free for 13 and under, free if you have a Texas State Park Pass, oh, yeah. which we highly recommend. And it's it's fun place. That's the Bayside camping area. And then bonus. Bonus. Kites Unlimited, super cool kite store. Yeah, if you get a chance, you want to visit this place. You don't have to buy, you could just look, but it's really neat. Worth checking out. Yep. Well, I hope you enjoyed these tips we had about not breaking the bank here on Galveston Island. Yeah, you can see and do a lot on a small budget. Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll see more of our videos. We're going to have more coming out soon. And uh, check out our website, rvtexasyall.com, for other fun things to do around the state of Texas. And until next time, y'all, safe travels and happy camping. Bye. Bye.